Here we're going to look at how to do an energy balance on a chemical reactor. And there's more than one approach that can be used to, to carry out this energy balance. We're going to use one based on using heats of formation that are incorporated into the enthalpies. And so essentially what we're doing is taking the reactants and products and calculating their enthalpies based on the reference state of the elements at 25 degrees in one atmosphere. And what I mean by that, let's say we had a reaction of CO and water reacting to CO2 and hydrogen. And we're going to need the enthalpies of each of these species. What we're going to pick as the reference state is solid carbon, O2 as a gas, and hydrogen as a gas at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere of pressure. And so we can look at, could visualize this as if we started with the reactants and they enter a reactor at some inlet temperature. We're going to take those species, look at the enthalpy change to make them elements. 25 degrees C. And then the products, the on reactive reactants. So going in that direction, we take the elements now, combine them to products at whatever the outlet temperature is. And we're looking at those enthalpy changes as a way to calculate, for example, the, the heat that needs to be added or removed from a reactor. So let's look at the energy balance equation. So let's look at the meaning of each terms. We most often say the term for kinetic energy change for most reactors is probably going to be zero. Likewise, the potential energy change. This is the heat added per time, and this is the shaft work, again per time, so the dot indicates per time. So now we're left with the two terms, and notice there's no heat of reaction term in this equation. That's because it's taking account in the enthalpy terms. So this is the, because we're looking at a reactor, a flow system, this is the flow rate of component I. So this is a molar flow rate. So this is the term that is important to see the difference from other approaches. So this is the enthalpy of component I leaving the system. What's that going to be equal to is the heat of formation component I, and that means the standard condition, so 25 degrees C, one atmosphere, plus the integral from our reference temperature, 25, because that's where most tables are available, to the outlet temperature of the heat capacity Et. So, so keep in mind, heat capacity typically has constants and a temperature dependence, and a fairly common form is something like this. But other forms can also be used. So H for component I into the system is equal to delta H of formation of component I at standard condition, 25 degrees, and then the integral from 25 to the inlet temperature, heat capacity, a temperature dependent heat capacity integrated over that temperature. And so this then allows us to calculate, for example, the heat added to remove the system for a system or the outlet temperature if we know what heat is added, how much conversion we have.